if you're sick. <laughs> no, seriously. Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes Christians get this weird idea about being sick as though it were some foreign object or some thing that will never happen to them. Well, the scripture teaches us that he healeth our infirmities and by his stripes we are healed. That doesn't mean that you walk around like, you know, some people that I know and some people that have done to me and say, oh, there must be sin in your life because you're sick. No. <laughs> now, let's be honest. Everyone sins literally almost every day compared to what God's standard is. So we don't measure up to the measure of perfection. So as long as we're not perfect, of course we sin every day because sin just simply means missing the mark. So in some ways, they're right about one thing. We're all sinners and fallen short of the glory of God and we need grace. So it's by grace we are saved. But as far as healing is concerned, have you ever had someone come up to you and just you know, tell you that, you know, if you have faith enough, you want to be, if you have faith enough, you'll be healed. Haven't you ever just wanted to pop them right in the mouth? <laughs> I have. I mean, come on. You get, you know, all kinds of people that have all kinds of ideas because something worked for them. You know, kind of like the old wives' tales, you know, like just because one person found out that, you know, if they, uh, they sucked on an icicle or a popsicle that it cured their sore throat. So then they run around telling everyone to suck on popsicles because it'll cure sore throats. Well, maybe it'll cure a inflamed throat <laughs> and maybe it'll make you feel good and maybe it tastes good. I know right now, especially in this kind of heat, popsicles would taste great. But you know, just because it worked once for a person or maybe works for that person's sore throat, it doesn't mean that it works for everybody. Because you see, not all diseases are caused by sin. Not all inflammations or things that afflict our body are caused by some reality that some other person wants to tell you caused it. It's a very intricate, detailed system that we live in, meaning our physiology. Physiology means, you know, that physical body we live in, you know, the, the part of us that you could see, touch, feel, you know, the part that kind of, like most men, whines when it gets sick. I don't feel good. <laughs> and that's what I tell my wife. Whenever I don't feel good, I let her know. Because, after all, misery loves company. <laughs> but you see, God did heal many people. Not everybody, or else you would have had historians recording. And in Israel, guess what? When Jesus came upon the world, you know, the whole world was healed. No. It even says later on in the Gospels that he could do few miracles or few works because the people did not believe in the city that he grew up in. And because they didn't believe, they rejected what God was going to do. Because, you see, you have a freedom of choice. It's not really about your belief in or faith in or have enough work up belief in something although that is a factor because people think that faith is what makes someone get healed no it's not because it's a, called a placebo effect now placebo is simply an idea that you could have let's say a cure for the common cold in a pill let's just say you do Okay, so you take that pill, and it cures your cold. Well, you get ten people lined up, and you could give five of those people the cure for the common cold, a pill. And then you could give five people a, oh, I don't know, you know, a idea in their mind that if they believe enough, if they have enough faith, if they just believe in this, oh, let's pick something silly, you know, ridiculous. What could we use that's silly and ridiculous? I know. Let's use this. What kind of flower is this, anyways? Heck, I know. It is a petunia. Let's say that if you just sniff the petunia, your cure would happen to you because you believe in God. Well, out of those five people that were told that, 
probably two or three of them would wind up having some kind of healing because of the placebo effect, meaning that the petunia had absolutely no benefit whatsoever. It wasn't by their faith. It wasn't by God. It was just what our body and our mind is able to do because God created the body to heal itself. Yeah, really. You have white blood cells and you have like these... Now they've discovered that you have these stem cells that can actually regenerate all kinds of parts of your body. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, they've taken stem cells now and they put it into you know different parts of your body that are damaged, you know, and healing goes on. You know, like in the old days they used to say that nerves never regenerate. Then they found out just within the last 10 years, yes they do, <laughs> just at a slower rate than anybody ever imagined. And then if you put stem cells upon nerve cells, those stem cells become nerve cells. Ooh, how did that happen? God. You see, God designed the body a certain way in order to respond in a certain means with which he calls his will. So if you do his will, then he is able to operate according to what he said he would do for us. Sometimes there are miraculous healings. I know myself, being a born-again Christian, I nearly died, you know, because frankly I had a disease that nobody knew what it was. They couldn't cure it, they couldn't figure out what it was, and it took them about 10 years of trying to kill me <laughs> to figure out what it was that I had. And by that time, God decided to heal me. So, I've been on both sides of the coin where sometimes surgery works, sometimes healing works, sometimes God works, sometimes it has nothing to do with anybody at all. Sometimes it's just the course of life. And the fact is, this physical body you live in will die. It will perish and pass away. It is something that God designed to only last for a certain period of time. And he said so in the scriptures. He said that man's days shall be 120 years. And then some people look and see that God limited it at some point in time. But the reality is 120 is what God said. And so when you realize that your physical flesh is passing away, sometimes you react to it in different ways. You know, you become a hypochondriac. You know, you get carried away with believing everything's wrong with you. Or you become a faithful, faith, faithochondriac. You know, that you believe that if you just have faith, everything will be healed. You know, both are kind of like extremes that really aren't what God wants you to be. You see, Jesus, when he came, said, look, hypochondriac, you've gotten carried away. It doesn't work that way. And when Jesus came, he looked over at the faith of Kondriak, you know, and said, hey, look, now, <laughs> I understand that if you just think you dive into that pool because an angel comes, you know, that if the waters ripple, that was an angel, 